Good afternoon. Here I, here I am again. Original founding member of Westside Crips, Judson Baker. Today I would like to talk about my boy. Uh, did we have an intimate relationship? No. Did we have a, a, a friendship relationship? Yes. A street relationship? Yes. And I'm talking about Stanley Tookie Williams. Uh, who was the founder of Westside Crips, 1970, for those who didn't know. Uh, my personal interaction with Tookie, it really was never on an intimate basis. Did we have conversations? Yes. Did we hang out together? Yes. Did we hang out one-on-one? -on -one? There was only two particular times that I can remember that I hung out with Tookie, just him and I. Most of the time, it, we'd be at St. Andrews Park, and it'd be about 15, 20 of us just hanging out. Tookie, you know, homies from the hundreds. You know, so uh, my interactions mainly came with Tookie through crip Cripism. I knew him before Crip started, which uh, I knew him about a year before Crip started because Don Archie brought him into the hood when uh, he moved in. He used to run with Don Archie. And that's why I say if there's anybody who's could be called a co-founder of the Crips is Donald Sweetback Archie. Now, getting back to Big Took. You know, there's been a misconception about Took and the way he handled Crips and his, his mannerism. If you knew Took, you knew Took was soft-spoken. He didn't hardly ever raise his voice. He was soft-spoken. Uh, did he demonstrate a a heavy hand at times yes he had to because his stature was growing daily when we first started took he was uh he wasn't that big but as we got to going and cripping he started lifting weights pounding real heavy and got real big in a matter of six or seven months he blew up he already had the body structure for it but uh he blew up and as he, his body structure blew up, his fame and his personal image blew up. Uh, for instance, a lot of people didn't know that him and Arnold Schwarzenegger used to lift weights together. The governor of California, the one who signed his execution order, who, who wouldn't give him a reprieve. Yes, indeed. He uh, was jealous of Tookie because Tookie was bigger than he was. And Tookie didn't take all the most steroids and all the rest of the stuff. It took was just natural. And so, uh, you know, but that's a different story. You know, I recall the last time I kicked it with Tookie was two weeks before I caught that, that beef at the Palladium. It was on a Sunday. Yes, it was on a Sunday afternoon, about one, two o'clock in the afternoon, I was coming out of my house and I see Tookie and another homie coming up the street. Uh, so we stopped, we kick it and asked me, where you going? I said, man, I'm going out to Compton. I said, y'all want to ride? I'm going out to my girl's house. They agreed, we jumped in the car. We just, we rode out to Compton. When I, at that time in, in Compton, Chris has just started, but I had been going out to Compton before Chris even started. Matter of fact, I used to be out of Kelly Park before there was in Kelly Park was really a notorious as it became before way before he's here now. I was out of Kelly Park in 1970. So, uh, you know, you do the math. And, uh, and on the way back, we kicked it out there for a couple hours. We went through the Grandies, wasn't none of the homies out. So on the way back, it's a show on Manchester called the Fifth Avenue. It used to be the Fifth Avenue. And so uh, that was the Inglewood Chain Gang's hangout because it was across Van Nuys. It was on the west side of Van Nuys. That was uh, Inglewood. And uh, those are the first ones we started banging against was Ingl uh, Inglewood Chain Gang. Anyway, we go up and we've been banging with them back and forth, you know. Uh, so, you know, Took Rep has grown. So it was, just, it was Tookie. And we had Keith Henderson was with us. And myself so we get up to the show 
park, I park in the parking lot for the uh, Hawaiian billiards and saw so, uh, go to the trunk, took said, what you doing, man? I said, man, I'm getting my gun. He said, Justin, you don't need no gun. I looked up at him and I looked at me and Keith and we, we small. I told him, no, you don't need a gun. We do. I said, I do. So I, you know, everybody tell you, I stuff my little 22. We go up in, we go up into the show. You know, as soon as we get, I'm a, this is how this, this brother's statue had already grown within. This is, we've been cribbing almost two years now. As soon as we get to the window, the lady recognized and said, you took you, huh? Y'all can go in free. As soon as we get in, now we're in enemy hood. As soon as we get in, the lobby is crowding. Woo -woo. Somebody said, Tookie's here. And so we, we walk down into the theater. We sit down and look around at people starting to get up. And before you know it, seriously, within five minutes, we were the only ones in that movie. <laughs> and that's honest to God truth. I talk about it in my book, by the book. They had to research the book. The book is nonfiction. Everything that I said, and that book is true. By the book. When we got up, we left. We got out to the lobby. I'm looking around. I'm saying, damn, where everybody go? And so the dude, dude that was selling the candies and popcorn and all that, was standing back there. He had to stay there. He was a young, so you, you could tell he was scared. He said, uh, are you really Tookie? Took spun on and said, yeah. He said, man, they left because of you. They scared of you. I'm like, oh. Uh, I'm like, damn. And that told me right then how big that brother's statue was growing. He was bigger than your 22, huh? Hey, that brother, hey, that brother uh, Real shit. you know, Took was a unique individual. And the brother should have never been executed. Right. Whether or not people believed him about in his books, about what he was trying to accomplish, that's on them. But he did accomplish a few things, some positive things with some youngsters. You know, if he saved one youngster's life, he saved a, a life. So, you know, uh, all that, you know, uh, we need a, a strong voice today. But, sadly, they took my boy. You know, and uh, Stanley, Stanley, Tookie Williams, should have never been executed. But now in foresight, in foresight, I'm quite sure if he hadn't caught all them cases and he seen the chaos that was going on, he still wrote the books, but he would have been an advocate for peace on the streets among Crips. Cause we, I'm quite sure he never envisioned Crips becoming what they are today. None of the original founding members because we weren't structured that away. When we came, when we came up, we had one person to answer to, he made the rules. If you violated the rules, you got dealt with. And, and part of the rules was, you did nothing to no elderly person, or no minor, or no baby, or no girl, or no nothing. If you did, you got, hey, that was, that was used in violation. Because I could call an instance, I'm not gonna call these brothers name, you know, I seen the brother, him and his brother cussing their mother out. And it got back to Took, they called a meeting up at the park that Saturday. And he asked him, was it true? And one of them said, yeah, we cut that B out. And what did he say that for? Took, he turned around and about 20, and no, he didn't put a hand on him. About 20 of the homies just rushed him. And they didn't stop to took, he said, that's enough. He walked over to him and said, y'all won't cuss your mother out anymore? And he looked at him and told him, y'all are not Crips anymore. And turned around and walked off. And from that day forward, that happened about a six, seven months before I got busted. And I know for a fact, them dudes, uh, nah. I never seen them come up back up to that park, claiming Crip nothing. You know? You know I make him. Say Crip nothing. You know, so uh, it's, uh, it'd have been different. I'm quite sure it'd have been different. Would it have been as much violence as it is today? No, but there was still been violence because for one, the West Side, as a collective whole, too many people would want to become independent of the West Side mm -hmm. and of Tookie, who become jealous and envious of Tookie. And they started their other little cliques.
you know? So, uh, that's my, you know, you know, I interact with Took, you know, I loved him. You know, did we have a personal, deep relationship? No. No, because I didn't know him that long. Did I have a personal, deep relationship with Crips? Yes, I did, because damn near everybody from the West Side in the 80s, in the 70s, I knew. And we had personal contacts and personal relationships. Our mothers knew each other. We went to the same schools. Our parents went to the same churches, shopped at the same stores, went to the same PTA meetings. Yes. So, you know, that I had a, you know, there was a greater uh, contact with my original founding members than with Took, but Took, can't say nothing bad about him. You know, and if you do, that's on you, partner. You know, keep it to yourself. Don't nobody want to hear about it. You know, at least I don't. I know the rest of the originals don't, because Took is dead. Why talk bad about the dead? Any dead. Like, Jamel Barnes, bitch ass mother. That's another story. Peace out.